polynomial and normal approximation stuff on steroids. Got an 11 mark question here. Um, let's go for it, innit? This is a crazy one. You don't want to miss this one. You're going to want to save this video so you don't forget about it. The time taken for a randomly selected person to complete a test is m minutes, where m is normally distributed 14 sigma squared. Given that 10% of the people take less than 12 minutes to complete the test, find sigma to 3SF. Okay, so they've already defined our distribution, so we don't need to define it again. It says, given that 10% take less than 12 minutes. Okay, so we always draw a pick. So just a quick one. We have the mean is 14 and the standard deviation is sigma. Less than 12 is 10%. So this area is 0 0.1. So you write down the probability statement. So the probability that m is less than 12 is 0 0.1. Now because sigma is unknown, whenever mu and sigma are unknown, we can't input things into the calculator. So what we do is we do the z transformations to get to a distribution that we do know the mean and standard deviation. Now we know the z distribution has a mean, so the z distribution has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Okay, so we're going to rewrite this in the z plane. And when you convert it to z, less than, so the probability that z is less than is known as phi. The function is known as phi. So you must always make sure that you know this is a cumulative distribution, so up to 12, that's a cumulative. When we convert that to z, that becomes the function phi. And then what you do is you take your input, you subtract the mean, so that the mean goes to zero, and then you divide by the standard deviation to make the standard deviation one. We obviously don't know what the standard deviation is. And by rewriting it as phi, to rearrange, we know we need to do inverse phi, which means we need to do the inverse normal distribution. So when you go into your calculator, you just go menu 7, inverse normal, type in your area 0 0.1, we get minus 1.2815 dot 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 dot. So sigma is about, so I'm going to do minus 2 divided by answer, minus 2 divided by the answer, 1.56, okay, 1.56, okay, cool, now for the next one we're going to need some space, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write A was 1.56, so sigma 1.56, and let's do the next one, okay, 1.56 sigma, all right, part B says, that a random sample of n people is taken. Using a normal approximation, the probability that fewer than nine of these people will take less than 12 minutes to complete the test is 0 0.3085 to 4dp. Find the value of n. Okay, so we've taken a sample. They want us to use a normal approximation. There's a reason why they're asking us to do this because to find n, you need to. Um, it says the probability uh, that, well, the first thing I need to do is I need to redefine the distribution because we're talking about n people. Before, we were talking about 14 people, right? So let's redefine. This, um, let z, no. What do we use? We used uh, m, n, let n. No, that would be silly because we've used n. Why is it so hard to pick a letter? Let's just use x. Let x equal number of people... Who, what is it? Uh, probability take less than 12 minutes to complete. So number of people who take less than 12 minutes to complete test out of n. Yeah, it's out of n this time. So x is binomially distributed n people and the probability that... Um, it takes less than 12 minutes to complete the test, well, it's 0 0.1, isn't it? Given that 10% of the people take less than 12 minutes, so 0 0.1. All right. Now, they're saying the probability that fewer than 9 
So the probability that x is fewer than 9 is equal to 0 0.3085. Okay? But they want us to then move into a normal approximation. Now, the first thing we should always do is make sure that this is an equal to sign. So less than 9 means less than or equal to 8. Okay, so this is less than or equal to 8. Then we're going to move into the normal distribution. We're going to let y equal the normal approx of x. But then we have to define our normal variables. So mu, based on a normal distribution, uh, a binomial distribution, is just your number of trials times the probability, np, which is 0 0.1n. And sigma squared is n times p times 1 minus p. So np is 0 0.1n, and we're going to multiply that by 1 minus that, which is 0 0.9, which is 0 0.09. Okay? So my normal distribution for y is normally distributed um, uh, 0 0.1n and this. Okay? Now we can go into the normal distribution. So from this, the probability that x is less than or equal to 8, as we move into the normal distribution, we now need to consider the continuous variables. So less than or equal to 8, we need to think about all the values that could have run to this. This is a continuity correction. So if you look at a number line, we have 8. We want all of this, right? But when we come to the normal distribution, because it is continuous, we can have decimals as well. So we think about the lower and upper bound. Now, 7.5 is already in there, so it's 8.5. We need to extend our domain to 8.5. And now, we have to do the same thing. So because the mean and the uh, variance are unknown, we need to move over to the phi distribution, okay, which I have not got, but uh, you guys remember from before. So this probability equals what we had before, 0 0.3085. Now we're going to change it to phi. So we're going to do phi of our number, 8.5, our input, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Now we have to be very careful. This is the variance. So we have to root that. When you root that, you get 0 0.3 root n is 0 0.3085. This is why it's a juicy question. So we're going to inverse phi. Okay, so we get 8.5 minus 0.1n over 0.3 root n is... Now when I do inverse phi, whatever value I get, I'm going to store it. So menu 7, inverse normal, 0 0.3085 minus 1.5 minus 0 0.5, sorry, 001 dot dot dot. Now, this value here I'm going to store as A. Okay. So now let's move up and continue with the rest of the working out. Okay. So this is going to help us work out N. So I'm going to multiply through by this. Now, to do that, I have to do A times 0 0.3. So I'm going to get 8.5 minus 0.1N is... This should give me, be giving you vibes about how we're going to solve this. So menu 1, A times 0 0.3. Okay, so I have minus 0 0.15 dot dot dot. I'm not writing the whole thing. Root N. Okay, now this I'm going to store it as B, something else. Now I'm going to move this all to the other side because this is a quadratic. So we have 0 0.1 N minus 0 0.15 root n um, minus 8.5 and now we're going to do the quadratic formula for root n okay because that squared is this so we get negative b so i get 0 0.15 dot 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 plus or minus root b squared minus 4 a c in the exam you need to show all this all over 2 a and then we just slap it in the calculator. Um, so I have menu A, polynomial solver, uh, 2. 
0 0.1, what I stored as B, and minus 8.5. So one of my values is literally 10.000 dot dot dot. And the other one is minus 8.499 dot dot dot. But root n cannot be negative. Root n is bigger than or equal to 0. I can say but. OK? Therefore, n, when you square that, n has to be an integer. n is 100. OK? And that is your solution. That's a really intense question. OK? So that's why, guys, make sure you save this video, favorite it, like the video if you learned something new, share this with a mate if you think you'll benefit them, and subscribe for more maths content. If you're interested in my A-level maths courses, more details in the description. And feel free to join the Learn Gang Reddit page if you want to submit your own questions and get feedback from the community. I'll see you in the next one. Nice.